right, we got a little status update on session in dev blog number five that just released. As always in these dev blogs, there's gonna be some good news and there's gonna be some not so good news. I'm just gonna skip to the important stuff. If you wanna read the whole dev blog, I'll leave the link in the description. So in-game improvements, continued optimization for performance. That one's an obvious one for all updates because they're always gonna be trying to optimize every map to uh, play better on every platform. Pause menu restructure in order to improve visibility, which was a little bit of an issue for 1.0. It was a bit hard to see. As well as ease of access to core menus and settings, we have cleaned up and restructured the pause menu. All right, good. Mission tracking. Improved mission tracking will allow you to jump between main path, secondary, and pro missions on the fly. It will also improve visibility of all mission options available at that time. Mission completion. If you complete steps of an untracked mission, you are now notified. That's actually something that we already have in 1.0. So I'll give you a little example of what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to talk to this one to kind of like activate it. So this one is big gap to bank. So right now I've talked to the Philly local, but it's not tracked. I can I can track it and untrack it. I'll just track the top one right here just so there is one that's tracked. So you can see that this one is not tracked at all. But upon completing the challenge, you can hear a little audio cue right there confirming that you did it. We're just going to do the front side 180. There we go. And even if I try to see what's left, if I click here, ribs man one is still tracked. However, I do know that I need to flip into it. So I'll just uh, double kick flip and it should just pop up automatically. There we go. We got that one done. So it does already tell you that you've completed certain tasks within an untracked mission, but I guess they're gonna notify you in like a better way. Mission progression. You are now fed side missions to meet the required experience before proceeding to the shop meetup and all other arc gates. So a lot of people don't even know that you need a certain amount of experience in order to start the skate shop meetup. So for the skate shop meetup, you need 800 experience before you can even like check off talking to Donovan. For the Philly Jam, you need 3000 experience. For the Brooklyn Banks Jam, you need 5000 experience. And for the EMB Jam, you need 8000 experience. I've done my homework. I need to know these for speed running. Mission detection improvements is something we desperately need for quite a few of them. Transit improvements. The transit map now identifies as the single stop nearest the required location. Transit map now identifies the nearest stop to the destination within the same city, okay. Replay editor updates, now stores TOD, time of day, changes made in the editor. Added a check for existing save files with conflicting name, okay, okay. Brandalized DLC content is now free in the shop. That does not mean that the DLC is now free. It means when you purchase the DLC, then in-game shop, like, you know, the skate shop, the items in there are now going to be free for that like DLC. Audio improvements. We got wind effects. Wind sound plays when going fast. Different sounds will play depending on if you are in the air or on the ground. Attenuation settings, tweaking attenuation falloffs, adding occlusion, focus effects, Doppler and reverb reverb distance. And there's a couple examples of the fall off distance. So I'll let you guys listen to that. Then we got footstep materials, added sounds when walking on different surfaces, glass, cars, plastic, etc. For manuals, they added wheel impact sounds when exiting a manual. So for effects, testing stereo delay on certain sounds to give you more width. For grinds, added unique sounds when grinding on top of a fence. And for the board, they added improved board impact audio. I'll let you listen to these.
They got some general mixing as always, daily challenges, grind challenges now track in meters. I'm a little bit excited for this one right here, historical challenge trick detection, because this one right here, welcome to hell, as most of you know, has always been an issue. And then same with the other Brooklyn Banks line from Nate. Now, a little bit of unfortunate news here. Um, the person that makes these historical challenges and like the story missions and all that, they no longer work for Creature. He did leave pretty recently, so I'm hoping that he was able to fix up some of the challenges that were incorrect. So for example, this mission right here, this challenge, switch backside heal, um, Tom Asta did not switch backside heal it. He switched front healed it. I didn't do switch back heal. I did switch front heal. Wait, did they actually put it in a switch back heal? Haha, <laughs> it's backwards, dude. I wish I switched back healed it. So I made sure to mention that to Nick. Hopefully uh, he was able to fix it up before he left. I might as well pile on more bad news right here. Uh, so in addition to Nick leaving Creature Studios, you know that new animator that they just hired? Yeah, it turns out that he wasn't a good fit and no longer works for them, so they don't have an animator anymore. Don't think we're gonna be seeing any new animation fixes anytime soon. Okay, so they got some onboarding improvements, and by onboarding, they mean new players to the game. And this kind of says early on, as of the next patch, planned for early 2023. Yeah, that's right. We are not getting a December update. It has been pushed to early 2023. So the original Brooklyn Banks tutorial has been scrapped for a better paced and more transitional introduction to the gameplay mechanics. Yeah, they definitely needed that for the new players because a lot of the stuff wasn't explained. Luckily, there's a lot of community members across all platforms that are willing to help anybody that needs help in the game so they can actually enjoy it. But it's good that they're going to try to help people within the game itself instead of having to like go digging for help. The new difficulty preset will now account for basic left stick navigation and does not require mirrored input for switch tricks amongst other ease of access changes. Now we did actually get a confirmation of what that means. So for front foot, back foot input, you're gonna be able to use your left stick to turn and you can use your triggers to turn, but they're gonna open up the option to use the left stick to turn. Now, as you can see in this current version, that's a little bit of an issue because it, uh, it activates, oh, it activates pressure flip stance, and you don't want to be doing pressure flips when you try to turn. So apparently what they did to fix that was make it so pressure flips can only be activated from diagonal input instead of left and right inputs like you can on here. Like you can do the diagonal one, and obviously it still works in this, but uh, it's like not as in the pocket as if I did this. See the difference? So apparently for left foot, right foot, and I think for front foot, back foot, they're gonna be uh, diagonal inputs instead for pressure flip stance or side pop stance. I'm still saying it's gonna cause a little bit of issues trying to turn because people might accidentally like do a little bit like diagonal up. I don't know, I guess we'll have to see when the update comes out. So for the new players of session, front foot, back foot inputs are gonna be the default and they're gonna be able to use the uh, stick to turn. This default setting will now prove as a transitional step into full session feature set once the players have found their comfort in the core navigation and trick sets. The tutorial is considerably longer than before but provides foundation of exposing and confirming key elements from navigation to tricks and supplemental features. As we found out that even an experienced skater there were some core gameplay features that were poorly or not at all exposed. So I'm glad they're finally acknowledging that. There was a little bit of pushback on that for a while. Not only are we tackling the first time user experience, we've also made various improvements to existing features. The mission log is now toggled on and off HUD. It now allows for scrolling between current mission options without having to enter the pause menu and skater logs, leading to more time for you to work on your tricks and clips. It also provides input per step of the tutorial as to what is expected of the player. While we're tackling on how to improve the first time user experience, we're also working on elements for our existing player base. So that's me and everybody else that plays the game already. As mentioned before, the content being produced is awesome, so it's only logical that we pursue features that promote the challenging of friends and sharing content in the game world. So that sounds like sharing things within the game, like clips and stuff. To this extent, we're currently scooping and designing the potential for future features that will help transition your offline gameplay 
with the session community in a seamless matter. Manner, not matter. So maybe they're working on something like what Skate 3 had, like sharing all your clips like with the rest of the community. Upcoming content, new and unique object dropper assets for both the next free patch and the subsequent DLC. We're working on the next pro skater who will be coming to session. He's a pro known for his absolute love for skateboarding and throwing backside 360s into his trick sets. Some call him the NBD King. So I'm going to I'm going to take a guess right here. Chris Cole. That's my guess and I'm like looking at Discord and people are saying the same thing, Chris Cole. Cuz like NBD King, he's done a lot of NBD stuff. Backside 360s into his trick sets, Blizzard flip. I don't know, that's my guess, but like Chris Cole seems perfect for this game and his shoes are already in the game. Like you can use his uh, his fallen shoes right now. And it would not be a session update if they didn't add a new map. This is the first foray into a non-city setting and not including the skate parks. We're loving the variety it's bringing so far. This map will be part of the future DLC drop. So take a look at the images below. Now, if anybody knows where this is, um, if it's like an actual real spot or just created one, let me know in the comments because I actually don't know where this what like is it uh the warner brothers back lot are the animaniacs living in this tower we do have more of a look at this actual map right here so oh that was that was quick so it looks like this new map has a lot of transition stuff and like drainage ditches and all that stuff it looks pretty fun we got some manual pads with uh some rails in between. There's some slides in the background. Looks like a pretty fun map. Another little thing that they teased right here was this uh, new curved bench. There's actually a little bit of history behind this bench uh, between New York and Philly. The people from Philly stole it, if I remember correctly. And then they showed off this clip uh, of fire. They have fire coming in the, in the new map. So what is next? Our next releases are now planned for early 2023, starting with a free patch. They really wanna make sure that we know that it's free and we'll be tackling the overall accessibility and onboarding of players into session, as well as the many quality of life fixes listed above. This free patch, see I'm telling you, they really want us to know it's free. will be followed by our first official DLC drop. And finally, to keep the players up with it, yeah, join their TikTok. So yeah, that is uh, what's going on with session right now. Everything that we know about the new update date. Uh, unfortunately, it was pushed back to early 2023. No idea when it's actually going to be released, but I will keep you guys updated as soon as I find out. I'm going to be completely honest here and say that I'm extremely disappointed that there's no mention of gameplay fixes, like, you know, the core skateboarding of the game. Uh, unfortunately, there's no fixes. So like the impossibles are still probably going to be broken. I don't know if they fixed or adjusted the power slide stuff. But yeah, there's no mention of core gameplay fixes in here, which is a little bit disappointing. It seems to be more like the UI, missions, transit, replay editor, audio, not the shoes. But hey, on the bright side, at least we know that they are still working on the game. They're still telling us what's going on. That's the takeaway from this. I'm still excited for the future of this game because I do enjoy playing it still, even with all the little bugs and unfinished mechanics and all that stuff. Like I still have fun playing this game, but that is going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of what we're getting in the next update. If you're disappointed or if you're excited, I mean, either one, but just like, you know, keep it civil but i will catch you guys in the next video